The other thing I think that it's important to know that um, although we all, I, I think hopefully most people would agree the importance of clinical trials to be able to improve outcomes for our patients, it is sometimes um, difficult to recruit to clinical trials, so to get patients onto clinical trials for a number of reasons. So firstly, there might not be a clinical trial for the particular patient that you have, or that particular patient might not be eligible. So they might have a, a, a comorbidity or another disease that means they cannot go into the study, or their cancer might not be the right state or they might have had other treatments that don't make them eligible. So there are lots of specific um, entry criteria that they have to um, meet before they can go into the clinical trial. And those entry criteria are designed mainly for safety um, for the patients, which is obviously the foremost thing that we're thinking about, but, but also so that um, we can answer the question appropriately that we're asking of the clinical trial. The other thing is that um, patients um, that, you know, for doctors it does take a little bit more work to put patients on clinical trials. There's quite a lot of paperwork and a lot more visits and, and generally in a, a busy clinic we're always trying to think of clinical trials but it, sometimes it, it does go to the back of our mind when we're just trying to make sure that the patient's safe and has their treatment on board. So we have lots of checks and balances, um, at, at, particularly at our institution and, and hopefully at many institutions where we can bring that to the forefront of our discussions. We have lists to check off, we, have, we check our patient lists before they're coming in and our registrar also goes through our patient lists to see if there's any clinical trial options that we can discuss with our patients. So in, in um, Hobart uh, last year, we recruited 100 patients to uh, clinical trials and we are making a slow increment in the number of uh, patients we get on to clinical trials. And that represents a, a roughly about 9% of all new cancer diagnoses or patients with new cancers um, being put onto a clinical trial. Now, that is still really low. Um, it's actually better than many other parts of Australia and internationally where the rates are about 5% of patients entering clinical trials. Many of the cancer um, bodies around the world suggest we should be aiming for 15% at a minimum. If you look at childhood cancers, 60% of children enter clinical trials. And if you compare the outcomes of um, diseases in children and the diseases in adults, you'll find that there's been much bigger leaps in um, the improvements in outcome than children. And a lot of that is because they have much higher um, participation rates in clinical trials. So we currently have 27 oncology clinical trials open um, for recruitment at the Royal Harvard Hospital, five of which are AGITG or gastrointestinal clinical trials. And I think since I moved back to, to Hobart, we've had um, about we've been involved in 15 uh, AGITG clinical trials. So.